You're fine, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got my, my booster shot. Uh, uh, yes. Good evening. Today we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is number 979, Wake the Song of Jubilee, number 979. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Sisters and brothers, we're at the 32nd Sunday in ordinary time, and there's only 34 before we begin a new liturgical year with the first Sunday of Advent. Very naturally, as we're ending, coming close to the end of the liturgical year, the church orients us towards the end of time and the return of the Lord Jesus, when what is old will finally be transformed and replaced by what is new. It also gives us an opportunity to think uh, forward to the the end of our, of our earthly life. Since All Souls Day, we celebrated last Tuesday, and throughout the month, we are praying for the souls of our faithful departed, whose uh, names are written so lovingly upon the envelopes on our altar. So the Lord tells us, indeed, to live for the day, but also in preparation for that glorious day that will come when, God willing, we will see him face to face. Now let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries as we meet our risen Lord in his word and sacrament. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, 
O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Today's readings begin on page 81 in the Missalette. Page 81. The first reading, a reading from the book, first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cup of water to drink. So she left to get it, and he called after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go. And do as you propose, but first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord God of Israel says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of wine of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of the flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Strangers. Praise, 
not the way of the wicked, he thought. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Praise the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. soul. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have to suffer repeatedly from the foundations of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of ages to take away sin by his sacrifice just as it is appointed that human beings die once and after this judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows, and as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, 
from her poverty has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. One of the, uh, the lessons that my teachers in school, the Franciscan sisters, tried to instill uh, in me and my classmates was the importance of of persevering in the tasks of life. That often enough, as we were pursuing those tasks, we would not always get instant results. But that sometimes, it would only be through long, sustained effort that we could accomplish the task at hand. Therefore, to learn, I guess what people would call delayed gratification, That is, that in perhaps the most important things of life, as we work towards them, they will come only to fruition after a long, sustained effort. Now, I think most of us here, we we have learned that lesson. Although we can still buy into the somewhat juvenile approach to life in our culture, which is, I want my satisfaction and I want it now. And to be sure, it's remarkable the uh, effects of the progress of human technology that some things that we would have to wait very long for. For instance, if I wanted to find out the, the answer to a particular question, I might have to go to the library and look it up. And finally, uh, after considerable effort and time, find the answer I was looking for. Now I can just take my cell phone out and go onto the internet and, and get an an answer much more quickly. And that's not a bad thing in and of itself. But there are some things in life that do not come quickly. And the fruition of which does not come quickly. Human relations fall into that category. And our relationship with God also falls into that category. In order to enjoy satisfaction in the task of friendship and marriage, working with others at our jobs, or our relationship with God as individuals and as a community, this requires constant sustained effort. Otherwise, we will not reach uh, a point of gratification. We'll give up, we'll give up too soon. And also, we will not develop those necessary virtues that we need that can only happen when they are put to the test. 
This is true of the, the gift of faith that God gives us, faith in, in Jesus. The Lord tests all of us. Even Jesus himself was tested during his earthly ministry by his trials in the, in the desert, for instance, where the evil one harassed him, tempted him. That it's only through these, these testings of faith that our faith actually becomes more than anemic, but becomes vigorous and robust and can handle what for others might be catastrophic situations, and we can handle it, not necessarily with ease, but we can handle it. Because faith, of course, taps us into that, that divine charity that has been, that faith opens our heart to receive. The grace of God that without which we cannot come to a successful conclusion to actually any of our tasks, even earthly tasks, not as the Lord would have them done. We need him. I think the, the scriptures today remind us of the importance of our contribution to the work of salvation, the salvation of our soul and the souls of others, salvation of our world. No matter how sm small it may seem that contribution is, but that that's mistaken. Was it the play Richard the Second or Richard the uh, Third, where the king says, "For one of a horse, the battle was lost; for one of the battle, the kingdom was lost," and so forth? Attentiveness, faithfulness to the task of life cooperating with the grace of God, even in the smallest matters, is absolutely crucial. I remember once there was some event, I was uh, still living with my parents, some event that I really didn't want to go to. And my parents said, no, you need to go. Well, there'd be so many people there who would miss me. And they said, that's not the point. Go. You have something to contribute, and others will benefit from your presence, even if you can't see it. It's amazing how those little lessons in life, you remember them, and they, they hold good uh, throughout your life. The importance of showing up being faithful in small matters, even if no one notices it, even if we hardly give it any second thought, yet to do these things, to say our prayers, to meditate upon God's word, to do a little act of charity, to show a little act of kindness and of patience towards one neighbor, to go and vote <laughs> in the local elections, We make a difference, even though what we contribute may be comparatively small. But the Lord takes that and he multi multiplies it. As he multiplied the, the loaves and the fishes. He takes our very small works, combines them with every el everybody else's small works and produces something truly miraculous. That was, I think, the lesson that our Lord was teaching that widow in Zarephath who was down to uh, what she thought would be her last meal. She had but a handful of flour and a little oil. 
And here comes the prophet who speaks God's word and God's mind to this widow and says, uh, don't worry, you're going to make your last meal. Well, why don't you use at least some of it to make me a meal? And she does it. And because she does it, she finds that she doesn't run out of flour. She doesn't run out of oil. She and her son survive the, the time of famine. Yes, a miracle, but it also shows us the way God works with those who simply listen to him and follow his instruction, even if it seems very small. He will multiply that. And he will make our faith very strong so that, as I said, even when seemingly catastrophic things may happen to us, we have the wherewithal to meet and overcome every obstacle. Jesus, as he's in Jerusalem with his disciples, says, beware those educated people who, the Bible scholars, who in one respect can maybe recite the Bible for, for memory or can uh, be very erudite in explaining some of its mysteries. And yet, they can at the same time be oblivious to the whole import of the Scriptures, which is God changing the human heart, bringing down the lowly, exalt, or bringing down the, the, the proud and exalting the lowly. The scribes were living a, a very worldly life, and the evidence that they were far from God, even though they may have known the Bible better, was they would, in their greed, devour the houses of widows. In other words, uh, cheat them out of their inheritance. And cover it all over with lengthy prayers, justifying it to themselves. And then, as as. Jesus speaks about the devouring of the houses of widows. He points out to a widow who's coming to the treasury in Jerusalem where the people would come during the festivals when the law of Moses would have them come to adore at the temple. They would put their, their money into the treasury. And the, the poor widow, she, she put in just two little copper coins worth a penny. You know, it's almost absurd how small an amount that is. One might be tempted to say, oh, just keep your penny. You know, uh, the rich people can take care of this temple. What can these two little coins buy? How are you going to support the temple sacrifices? and the main maintenance of the temple and so forth. But Jesus, of course, he sees the true wealth and greatness of the gift that was given because the widow gave to God all that she had. And throughout Jesus Ministry. He was teaching his disciples that if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow after me. In other words, put everything on me. Stake everything on me. And whoever gives up mother and father, sister, brothers, houses, property in this life will get a hundred times more in this life and eternal life in the life to come. That's, that's the way grace works. But we have to make our contribution as small as it may be. And Jesus says, whoever gives but a cup of water to a disciple 
will not go without their reward. If our faith is very little, then give it all to the Lord and it will grow. If our faith is great, we give it all to the Lord and it gets even greater. And this is how we prepare to enter into eternal life. This is how salvation comes to our house and to the house of others. It is by giving whatever it is that we have. We're not just talking material things. We're talking about our personhood, our, our interior gifts. We put them at the feet of Jesus. Lord, use them as you would have them used. And the reward is cannot be comprehended. It is so great. So we'll end with this. The author of the letter to the Hebrews says that Christ, who, who is a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, not of Aaron, as were the Old Testament high priests, but Jesus is the bearer and the priest of a new covenant in his blood. And so he enters the sanctuary, not the one that's made by hands. He didn't go into this holy of holies in the temple. Only the priest of Aaron could do that. And once a year to present the sacrifice uh, before the Lord, before the Ark of the Covenant, before the throne of the cherubim, so that the Lord would look kindly upon the people and forgive their sins. Christ never did this. But what he did do was prepare a pleasing offering to the Lord, not of the blood of a goat, but his own blood, the blood of a, an unblemished lamb. By giving his life on the cross for us, and he took that sacrifice up to the sanctuary, the true one, in heaven, there to present it to our Heavenly Father. It becomes an eternal giving of that sacrifice done once for all on Calvary. And in that eternal sacrifice, every blessing and every reward comes to us who have given our two coins, or our ten coins, or our million coins, whatever we have, who've given everything to Jesus. And the bread, which is the Eucharist, and the oil, which is the sacred chrism used at baptism, confirmation, and other sacraments, they will never run out. Our faith will have its reward in what we celebrate here. The sacrifice of Jesus now coming into time for us so that we may eat of it, partake of it, conform our hearts to it. Little things showing up to church. preparing one's heart for communion by saying the prayers of the liturgy and then receiving on the tongue or on the hand the bread of life. So small and yet filled with life and love and joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. gratefully profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ the Lord will come to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Filled with the gift of faith, we now make our prayer to our Heavenly Father, presenting to him our needs and those of the whole world. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord, that through the Church's faithful announcement of the Gospel, God's Word may transform all pain and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Grant our Grant prayer, our prayer Lord. Lord. That the wisdom of God will guide and direct all who govern us. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer Lord. Lord. For the blessings on all our nation's veterans, especially those who have undergone catastrophic injuries, and for the protection of those who serve in our country's military, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, Lord. Lord. For the grace to be generous in living out our faith in the spirit of charity, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, Lord. For the prayer intentions of those we serve through our food pantry, for the poor, and for all those who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. For those who are preparing to receive the sacraments, for faithful marriages, and for an abundance of religious vocations, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the elderly, the terminally ill, those suffering from mental illness and addiction, and all who are sick, that the Lord will help them bear their illness in union with Jesus' obedient suffering. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all our beloved dead, especially Francis Mara, that as we remember them in a special way through this month of November, the Lord may bring them to joy of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, and for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day. We pray to the Lord, grant our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. Loving Father, secure justice for the oppressed, give food to the hungry, set captives free, and raise up those who are bowed down. We trust in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our second collection today is for the Improvement Fund. Thank you for your generosity.
this stuff this evening. As we're getting almost to fall here. Yeah. See here. It happens. As we get older, we grow and then we shrink. Then we grow. But maybe you'll get even taller. God willing. Thank you so much. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will be held for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord, amen. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed whose names are on our altar. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now, possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Hugh of Grenoble and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, <coughs> through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing shall I want, nothing shall I fear. Let us pray. Nourished by the sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure 
in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're welcome to all of our visitors with us this evening. The flowers that you see in front of our altar and in front of the statue of the Blessed Mother uh, were donated for a renewal of vows that took place uh, the, earlier today of a couple married during the pandemic in 2020. I guess we're still in the pandemic, but the, when they were married, just a very small number were able to attend, and today, a, a great outpouring. It was beautiful, and so we, we wish uh, Melissa and Eddie uh, Lou uh, many blessings. And uh, Melissa is the daughter of Mary and uh, Ken Bitter in our parish. The November share menu can be found in this week's e-bulletin. Please consider donating a Thanksgiving dinner so that our food pantry can serve the increased need seen at this time of the year. Orders are due this Sunday, November the 7th. Also see the e-bulletin for how you can help with our St. Hugh of Grenoble Church's 75th anniversary fundraiser to, replay, to replace the chairs in Grenoble Hall. The Christmas Bazaar continues uh, tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. There is still something there for everyone. Thursday, November 11th is Veterans Day. Daily Mass will be celebrated at the usual time of 7.15, but the parish office will be closed. On that day also, we will celebrate the funeral mass for longtime parishioner Francis Mara, aged 97, who passed to the Lord a few days ago. Uh, we pray for the repose of her soul and for the consolation of her daughter. And now let's pray together the prayer to St. Joseph that you will find on the prayer cards in your pew racks. Together, hail guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. And remember, we get an extra hour of sleep tonight as we go back to standard time. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen and throne above all hymn is number 593, Christ is Alive, number 593.
Okay, Akizi. Have a great week. Oh, sure. Okay. Very good. All right. Look at Psalm uh, 110. Okay. 110. Take care. A good week. Yes, indeed. God bless you. You're welcome. I'm doing well, Richard. Yourself? Okay. Um